Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. On behalf of Big Magazine and our sponsor, Montrose Environmental Group, I'd like to welcome everyone to today's presentation on LDAR Program Strategies, What You Need to Know About Alternative Work Practice. Hi, this is Robin Dupree from BIC Magazine. A few pointers regarding your webinar or console. There's a Q&A box on your screen to text in questions anytime during the presentation. This portion will occur at the end. If you experience any technical problems, send a chat message to the organizer and it will be addressed as needed. And please join us in live tweeting during the course of the event and share your thoughts with our Twitter audience. Use the hashtag Montrose Webinar. And now I'd like to thank our sponsor, Montrose Environmental. Montrose knows that dealing with the logistics and implications of, of environmental issues is vital. With more than 1,700 employees in 70 locations, Montrose focuses on the future of environmental solutions with an integrated approach to design, engineering, and operations. They apply the latest technologies in practical ways to solve difficult environmental challenges today and prepare for what's coming tomorrow. From lab services to stack testing to regulatory compliance, Montrose helps clients blaze new trails. Go to montrose-enb.com for more information. And now it's my pleasure to introduce you to today's presenter. Terrence Trefiak brings over 19 years of industry experience to the Montrose team where he currently serves as VP of LDR Canada. Prior to joining the Montrose team, Terrence worked in various engineering positions for companies such as ConocoPhillips and BJ Services. And now I'd like to hand the mic over to Terrence. All right, thank you very much. Today I'm gonna to be talking about uh, the alternative work practice, which is a alternative approach for performing leak detection and repair programs at uh, industrial facilities. So I'm going to explain what the alternative work practice is, some of the history of it, and uh, how it's applied um, to uh, LDAR programs, and then go through some reasons why uh, companies should use the alternative work practice, and then I'll end off with uh, some best or pointers and best management practices on how to apply the alternative work practice at a facility. So as I mentioned, Montrose is an environmental service company um, with offices across North America. Um, I in particular work for the Eldar division, which is a part of the measurement and analytics division. Uh, and our experience in leak detection uh, is, includes both optical gas imaging and standard method 21, which I'll explain in more detail. Uh, we perform optical gas imaging services for over 2,000 facilities in the US and over 5,700 facilities in Canada. And for Method 21, we perform almost 800, or sorry, almost 8 million Method 21 monitoring uh, components per year. Um, my personal experience with optical gas imaging has goes back about 14 years. I'm providing, I've been providing uh, optical gas imaging services to uh, oil and gas facilities in Canada and the U.S. across about 13 years. So, just an explanation of what the two technologies are. Uh, standard Method 21 is using a handheld detector that you then have a probe and you uh, hold that probe over the leak interface of a component. So if it's on a valve, you would uh, trace it around the valve body and the connectors on the other side of the valve, and you'd be looking for a, a parts per million reading, so a concentration reading on that device. If the concentration reading gets above a certain leak definition, let's say the leak definition is 500 parts per million, then that would signify there's a leak. But it's a point source by point source. You have to measure each component individually. Whereas optical gas imaging uses an infrared, a specialized infrared camera that has a filter that can see hydrocarbon gases. So when you look through the camera, you can actually visualize and see the gas leaking from the components and you can scan multiple, multiple components at one time. So some uh, history on the uh, LDAR requirements in the US. Um, back in the 70s and 80s um, was when uh, Method 21 was kind of introduced in a lot of regulations for different industry segments, whether it was refineries, natural gas processing, or petrochemical facilities. But really, standard Method 21 was the, the, the main standard for doing those, those regulations, or for meeting those regulations. Then in, uh, in the 2000s, uh, there were some uh, NSPS uh, regulation changes that changed the um, leak definitions of doing those LDAR programs and also change the components that might be included in an LDAR program. And then in 2008, the alternative work practice was released, uh, 
which allowed for the optic gas imaging to uh, replace standard method 21 in, in, in most programs. And then in 2016, there's NSPS Quad OA regulation, which uh, actually just uses OGI alone, not having to use alternative work practice, but just uses optic gas imaging. And really, uh, going forward and, and since the, the beginning of those regulations, there's really only been two choices for standard method 21. Uh, it's increasing the number of components you're looking at. Uh, so, you know, increasing the type of component that's been looked at or the frequency of that, that you look at those components and then also looking at the leak definition or, or you know, reducing the leak definition from 10,000 to 5,000 ppm. But both of those options really just increase the cost of, uh, directly of doing method 21. So what is the alternative work practice? Uh, basically, any uh, LDAR program that's uh, codified in 40 CFR 60, uh, 61, 63, and 65. So any of the regulations under those, those uh, subparts uh, that require method 21, you can replace with the alternative work practice. So basically, it's using off the gas imaging instead of the standard method 21 procedures. And the requirements, uh, basically, it's a, a bi-monthly surveying of all, the entire facility using optical gas imaging. And the difference from standard method 21 is standard method 21, usually your frequency is based on the component type. So depending on the regulation, you might have to do connectors annually, uh, valves quarterly, pumps monthly. But with alternative work practice, you do the entire facility every two months, so six times a year. But then one of those times per year has to be to be method 21. So you still have to do one method 21 on all the components once per year. Uh, the leak definition when you're doing OGI, it's there's not a PPM reading leak definition. It's simply if you can see with the camera, it's a leak. Um, there's no skip periods or performance-based monitoring frequencies. So under standard method 21, if you have a uh, good performance or a lower leak rate, you can uh, put skip periods in where you're uh, decreasing the frequency of the survey, but with alternative work practice, it's a standard survey of six times per year or bi-monthly surveys uh, uh, and doesn't change. Uh, obviously, the camera must be able to see the gas uh, that, that you're of, of concern in your LDAR program, and you have to do performance tests on the camera and you have to determine maximum viewing distance when those, on those daily performance tests. So when you determine that distance, uh, you can't exceed that distance during the surveys. So you have to stay within a certain distance based on the performance test. And you also have to record the entire survey video. Uh, so you're recording the, the complete video of the survey, or complete uh, video of the survey and each individual leak source. In the, um, in the, in the alternative work practice rule, basically states that when, when used, AWP provides equivalent control and appears to be less burdensome to implement. And we've seen that in practice, that it's, uh, it's a lot less, less um, uh, management that goes involved with with implementing an elder alternative work practice program and a, the Texas reg uh, basically states that more frequent monitoring with the optical gas imaging instrument allows for larger leaks to be detected and repaired faster and that's really one of the main points and main benefits of using alternative work practice that I'll discuss further um, so what elder regulations uh, are applicable um, obviously there's federal federal EPA regulations that, uh, that if, they, if they reference method 21, you can then use alternative work practice for those programs. Approval is not required for those programs as long as you're following the alternative work practice uh, protocol. Um, and there's state regulations, depending on the state, some states will actually reference the alternative work practice. Some states will simply reference the uh, federal regulations that, that you're then allowed to use alternative work practice. And then some states may require separate approval for doing alternative work practice or a different type of OGI program to replace the Method 21 program. Um, there's also local and district regulations that may affect the ability to use alternative work practice. Uh, there's also specific facility permit conditions and consent decrees, which may also affect your ability to use alternative work practice. And there is a potential for that the alternative work practice is going to be revised specifically for the refinery sector. Um, EPA is working on this right now, um, and uh, there's a petition for reconsideration. And things that they're looking at, uh, one is that annual method 21 requirement. They're looking at the possibility of removing that, um, and that's quite significant. Uh, that uh, one annual method, once annual method 21 for most alternative work practice programs is about half the cost of normal uh, programs. So uh, removing that is a significant cost reduction for industry. They're also looking at um, removal of minimum sense detection sensitivity level or how you determine that, that detection sensitivity. 
Um, the requirements to keep all their video records, they're looking and seeing if that's appropriate. Um, they're also looking at how to apply the, the optic gas imaging to what is what components that would be normally considered unsafe or difficult to access with method 21. How do you apply that with optic gas imaging? And uh, also they're looking at using the alternative work practice for closed vent systems, which right now is, is uh, excluded from the alternative work practice. Uh, Montrose is also involved in a alternative work practice review for the refinery sector that takes place November 9th and 10th, and it's open to the public um, and specifically to those involved with the refinery sector. So what technologies do we use uh, when we're doing optogast imaging or, or alternative work practice? Obviously you need the OGI camera. Here we're showing the FLIR and the Alpha camera. They're two of the main cameras that are available in the market. We also have a parts per million uh, measurement device that to do standard method 21, which is still required once annually. We also do use bubble tests, which is SNOOP, which is simply a surfactant you spray on the uh, component and see if it bubbles up. Um, and then we also use alternative technologies uh, to measure emission rates. So high flow sampler is an example of technology that can actually measure the flow rate of a leak. So some of the limitations of the method 21, uh, really one of the big ones is probe, probe position. So you have to have that probe directly on the leak interface. So if you're, if you're on a connection, you have to have it right on the connection point. You have to slowly trace that connection point around. And if you have uh, just off by one centimeter, you're, you, can, you can miss your, your your rate can be down to 57%, so you can actually miss leaks if you're not going slow enough and not doing it, uh, doing it exactly as per the regulation. Um, and because of this, the efficiency is a problem. So it takes a long time to do a proper method 21 survey. Um, about 60 components per hour or 500 components per day is about the average. Um, but you know, you could see a technician that's doing 6,000 components a day, um, obviously he's not following the, the proper protocol. So it really takes, if you're doing a proper survey, it takes a lot of time to do it. Uh, you're also limited with the accessibility. You can only, uh, uh, you know, do it with the what you, or monitor what you can reach with the probe. So if it's uh, overhead over two meters, you have to build scaffolding, and then the frequency of those inaccessible components also drops to different frequency, um, and that's that uh, goes into the reduced frequency. So you, you can have reduced frequency for certain components that are inaccessible or unsafe to monitor. You can also have reduced frequency for components that. Uh, uh, if your facility has a, a lower emit, lower leak rate, that you can actually reduce frequency for certain types of components. Um, and then your, the, the impact of that is, if there is a leak on one of those components, it could be you know months to years before you actually find that leak with Method 21. So some of the benefits of OGI, uh, efficiency and cost is, is one of the big ones. So it, your ability to do the survey is so much quicker because you can scan components much quicker and scan groups of components at one time. So it's about 20 times faster than standard method 21 and about five times lower cost. Uh, the accuracy is also uh, increased because you can see exactly where the leak source is. With uh, method 21, you can get ghost leaks where you're picking up gas from a separate leak on a component and identifying the wrong component is leaking. Uh, accessibility, you can also um, go beyond that two meter length uh, of an inaccessible component of method 21. So it's it basically that when you set that maximum distance with your camera, you can then scan components that could be um, up to upwards of 50 feet away where you can actually identify leaks. Uh, it's also uh, safer to identify, or you can identify components or safety issues they may not with method 21. Um, when, you're doing, when you're scanning with a camera, you're seeing all the components. That means uh, maybe insulated components or components that are overhead that you may not be testing with method 21. And you, you can identify large leaks or, or issues, uh, safety issues that you cannot see with method 21. It's also a simplified approach. It's it's easier to administer the program as, as was mentioned, less burdensome to implement, and less time on site for uh, for your technicians. And the biggest benefit that that I, I that I believe is emission reduction. So with the increased frequency of using alternative work practice and OGI, you're able to find those bigger leaks faster, and that difference in detection time really means a massive uh, emission reduction. So here's a couple examples of ghost leaks. Uh, in this example, we had a uh, Method 21 contractor come in and find some leaks um, on this on these uh, this uh, liquid level gauge, and uh, they found some of these connectors and valves leaking. When we came in and did a OGI survey, we found that it was actually a faceplate on this liquid level uh, gauge that was leaking and leaking up over these components. So these were the, identified the wrong components leaking, 
And this faceplate is actually not even a regulated component, so you wouldn't actually be testing with Method 21. Um, but this is where the camera can see exactly where the leak point is and then eliminate the, the high cost of going on repairing the wrong component. Here's another example where uh, the valve in the foreground here was leaking and blowing gas back on a, uh, a flange. Uh, so the, a, a different contractor identified that flange leaking. We came in and said, no, it wasn't the flange. It was actually a different component leaking. Again, a big uh, cost savings by, by clearly identifying where the leak is. And it is sometimes a limitation of method 21. If you have a, if you're picking up gas on that leak interface, um, unless you can, can identify it as something else, uh, you, you basically have to say that that valve is, or that component is leaking. Uh, safety is also a, uh, a, a major benefit of OGI. You can identify a lot of components and through the years, uh, you know, uh, me and, and our staff have identified uh, hundreds of safety concerns with OGI that were really significant incidents. This one was one of the bigger, bigger ones we found. It was during a method, or during an OGI survey, uh, our technician found that there was a leak coming from outside of insulation, which again, insulated components are usually uh, exempt or they wouldn't be monitored with Method 21. So this is an area where we're looking at components that would not be monitored with Method 21. They found there was a leak coming in the insulation. So a crew came in, removed the insulation, and our technician came back when he was just walking up to the survey, he saw there were sparks on the, on the pipe. Um, and there was a heat trace line that was crimped and was sparking. Uh, so we immediately notified the operators They shut down the uh, um, electronics going to that, or the electricity going to that area. And they, um, here's a picture of, of the actual uh, uh, wire that was crimped. Again, obviously this is a, a high pressure uh, uh, natural gas line that, would, you know, if that would have caught up that leak that could have taken out the entire facility, hundreds of lives uh, lost. Um, so that's a massive find um, uh, in terms of safety. Here's the video. You can, it's hard to see, it's a it's pretty small leak, but it's actually coming out from outside the insulation. So it was actually still, uh, the leak was still further up on this pipe, but the, the sparking was just happening about a foot below the, the leak source there. So this is uh, Mr. Method 21. He's been doing Method 21 for, uh, since the, the early 70s, and uh, he doesn't like new fancy cameras. But his question is, uh, or his comment is, well, that's a real fancy camera, but you can't measure leak with that. And that's true, OGI uh, camera doesn't give you an actual quantitative rate, but it does give you a qualitative estimation of how big that leak is. So you can say whether it's a small, medium leak, large leak, or very large leak. And the problem is method 21 does give you a PPM concentration reading, but that does not give you a flow rate. You basically take that concentration uh, based on the component type and use a correlation factor to get a leak rate. But that leak rate can be off by a big margin, and I'll show some examples of that. But your ability to qualitatively estimate is far superior using the OGI camera than using those, those correlation equations. And uh, in, in a lot of times when we see it, it could be a thousand times more accurate to use the camera to, to estimate it versus what you're going to get with the PPM correlations. And here's an example of that. So this table shows uh, various uh, parts per million readings from 500 to or up to um, 1 million parts per million. And then it shows the EPA correlation effect, uh, or sorry, the, the rates with using the EPA correlation equations. Uh, so the rates in cubic feet per minute using the emission factors and then what the actual measured rates are. So this is based off uh, hundreds and hundreds or even thousands of emissions that we've actually taken the PPM reading with. They may actually measured using a high flow sampler. And we found that uh, on, the, on the smaller leaks in the range of 500 to even 10,000 PPM, the correlation of factors do work. They're, they're fairly accurate with a you know, plus or minus 18 at 9 percent. But when you start getting larger and larger leaks, that correlation starts to not work at all and starts to diverge quite significantly. Um, so when you get to really large leaks, you can be off by 10,000 times or even 200,000 times. So a, the difference between a small leak and a large leak is very vast when you're actually measuring the leak rates. But if you're using emission factors and, and PPM readings, the, the, the difference from a small leak to a large leak isn't that big. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's quite small range. So the correlation factors really don't work for large leaks. Uh, and what, so one of the comments I get back is, well, you can't, you can't measure leak with a camera. But if you look at these pictures for these videos, you can see that uh, you know, there's a, tap, small, a small dripping tap to a uh, running tap to a larger tap, to a fire hydrant that's leaking some, to a fire hydrant that's, that's you know, sp spring up and to a fire hydrant that's missing, to a dam that's literally loose, to a waterfall. 
if you can see the difference between these, you can see the difference between leak rate. And these are really the the expand, the, 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 uh, you know, a good metaphor for the size of those leaks. You can have a really small leak that's that's worth almost nothing per year to a leak that that could be worth hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars per year, and get in lost gas. So back to Mr. Method 21. Uh, but hey, we find more leaks with Method 21 because the camera can't see to fi see 500 ppm leaks. Um, and that's true, method 21 will find smaller leaks uh, in the 500 parts per million range. And that's understood uh, by the EPA when they created the alternative work practice. And that's why they increased the frequency because they, they saw that the camera can find the bigger leaks much faster. And what we found is those small leaks make up a very, very small portion, a minute portion of the total emissions at a facility. It's the larger leaks that make up the bulk of the, of the volume. So it's finding those larger leaks and fixing them faster makes a much bigger impact than, than finding the small leaks. Um, and this is just a, a kind of a picture representation of method 21 versus OGI. So method 21 is like finding needles in a haystack if those needles are leaks. You have to pick up each individual piece of, of straw and see is it a needle or is a piece of straw, go to the next test. With OGI, you can basically look at multiple the areas that, of that stack and pull out those leaks and, and really find the bigger le big leaks fast. And the other thing to look at that is, is, another way to look at this is not all needles are the same size. You have some needles that are tiny or microscopic and you have needle, needles that are as big as a building. Those are the size of difference in leaks that you're looking at. So really want to ignore those minute needles and focus on those big ones and find them faster. If you have one of those big massive needles sitting in that haystack and you're doing Method 21, you might not find it for months and months. Whereas with the camera, you're going to find it uh, during the, the, the full facility survey. So here's another example. This was based, this uh, data was taken off an LNG facility that we're currently performing alternative work practice on, and it has about uh, over 130,000 components. So if you look at this, uh, this graph uh, basically shows, or this chart shows the, the count of leaks that were found using uh, Audiovisual factory, meaning that operators just were, were, were walking by and they saw drippings or saw or smelt something and they found a leak. Then there was leaks that were found with optogas imaging and leaks that were found in method 21. So you can see here that the uh, about 60% of leaks were found in method 21. So more leaks were found in method 21 versus a 32% count of leaks were found with OGI. But if we look at the the uh, volume of these leaks when we actually measure them, uh, we're look that this looks at sorry, this shows that 90% of the leaks were found, or 90% of the volume of the leaks were found with OGI, only 10% were found with the camera. And then what this what this doesn't apply is, is also the, the timing when you find those leaks. So if we actually apply how much faster those leaks were found with using alternative work practice versus the time it would have taken with the frequencies using standard method 21, we're looking at a 99.92% reduction in emission total emission rates. So even though, uh, you know, you may miss some of those small leaks during your OGI survey. Uh, they really didn't account for for for, for you know very very small portion of the total leak uh, leak profile of that facility. And the, the what made the biggest impact was going after those big leaks and finding them faster. So really, it's it's ignoring leak count and focusing on leak rate. And that's one of the the, the one of the big uh, problems with industry is. Most facilities are graded on how many leaks they have. So, you know, they look at the total components, you've got 100,000 components and you have 100 leaks to your facility, um, that's how they're grading it. But you could have 10,000 leaks at a facility. If they're all tiny, tiny leaks, uh, that is, is much lower than you could have 10 leaks at a facility. And if, if you have, you know, a couple of massive leaks that that facility, those 10 leaks can be bigger than those 10,000 leaks. So really looking at leak count, and, and, you, and using correlation of, uh, equations doesn't give you the full picture. You have to look at actual leak rate and focus your shift from looking at, from, from grading a facility based on how many leaks it has to the total volume of leaks and, and using direct measurement, not, the, not the PPM correlations. Here's another uh, example. This was a connector leak that was found during, during an uh, alternative work practice program. So it was found on uh, January 4th, uh, sorry, January 14th, 2019. So this was when we were in one of the first surveys of the year for this facility. And this is, uh, this is a, what we consider a medium sized leak, about 0.32 cubic feet per minute leak rate. So if we take that uh, one medium sized leak, and that was about 100,000 ppm. Uh, 
measurement we using using the metronome device in that leak um, but it was found with OGI so that leak was was leaking for 14 days using the alternative work practice if we say we started at the beginning of the year so about 6451 cubic feet was emitted of gas if we'd be using a method 21 program uh, that uh, in this particular facility would only be an annual connector requirement so that that connector may not have been tested for up to 365 days but even if it was caught halfway through the year during the survey uh, of doing normal method 21 you're still looking at uh, hundreds and hundreds of percent increase in emission rates so that's where the alternative work practice really shows its benefit it's finding those leaks faster and and that, that you know that time that that leak is continually leaking while it's being waited for getting the method 21 monitoring really is, is is what adds up and adds to the total emission profile of that facility in this particular example it would have been uh, two to 25 times of the VOC emissions uh, had we had been using a standard method to own program. So now I'm going to talk a bit about how uh, how we apply alternative work practice and some of the the best practices we we developed. One of the main ones is technician experience and training. Uh, we have a very uh, in-depth training program and auditing program for our technicians to make sure that. Um, they do comprehensive surveys, no matter which technician is doing the survey, you're getting a consistent result. Um, but that training is important. Uh, you know, the, the camera is, is a tool, an effective tool, but like any tool, if it's not in the right hands of an experienced operator, it's not going to be used as well. Um, we spend a lot of time developing our training program, and it's, it's really an important component um, to, to our success as a company and our success of doing uh, a comprehensive surveys. Um, we've had examples of uh, you know, in, in the States, for example, we had uh, the quarterly regulations, a new regulation that came out. Um, we were looking at facilities that hadn't been assessed before. Um, there was a different contractor on site doing a uh, greenhouse gas survey using the exact same camera. We were doing an LDAR survey two days later. Um, the other contractor found about 14 leaks. We found over 120 leaks at that same facility. Um, and when it was looked into, it found out that, that, that the other contractor really didn't have much experience. They just rented a camera and went out there and, and tried to do a survey. So really having that experience is, is, is key. Uh, and, and really um, that comes down to what the training program is and certification program, at, at, uh, whether it's an internal program or at a contractor. Uh, there was also a study that was just recently released by the Energy Institute at the uh, Colorado State University where they looked at the uh, results from an inexperienced versus an experienced camera operator and they found that experienced surveyors found about two times as many leaks as inexperienced operators and um, you would think that was just maybe smaller and smaller leaks that would that the experienced operator would be able to find but actually some even larger leaks um, depending on if you if you're looking at the they can be missed by by inexperience and not knowing the limitations of the camera and how to do a proper survey So some pit pitfalls with alpha gas imaging. Uh, again, inex inexperience with camera use is, is, a, is the biggest one that, that really has the biggest impact on the results of an OGI survey um, and, and not following proper protocols. So you should have uh, proper protocols on how to do a survey that should be part of the training program. Um, using multiple camera angles is a big one. So when you're seeing that gas through the camera, you're seeing you need a, a, a temperature difference between the gas and the background. Um, and to do that, you take multiple camera angles to make sure you're getting different backgrounds on each component and make sure you're not going to miss any leaks. And that's an important, uh, important concept for doing OGI surveys. Uh, constantly moving the camera from scene to scene without pausing and looking at scenes is another big one. You need to be able to see that gas movement to identify the leaks. So you have to be paused on a scene and looking at a specific scene, looking for that gas movement, and then move on to the next scene. If you're constantly moving the camera, you're going to miss, miss leaks. Uh, again, where there's questionable thermal background, so if you have piping that's uh, low pressure and maybe it's outside and it's a cold day and, every, and the ground is cold and everything's at the same temperature, it's going to be more difficult to see those leaks. That's where you have to spend more time, get more angles, um, and really know when, when you're going to be in those situations to take more time to do that survey. Uh, scanning too fast is another big one. So just, just as with method 21, you have to go at a certain rate. Same thing with OGI. If you're scanning too fast with the OGI camera, you're going to miss leaks. You have to take your time and follow proper protocol. And uh, one of the biggest pitfalls with uh, not just OGI, but any other program is poor data management. So not, not collecting the proper data uh, and not managing that data properly for get, communicating that data to the right individuals that are making repairs is really where a program starts to fall apart. 
Uh, quantification. Um, when doing alternative birth practice, you don't have to quantify each leak. If you see with the camera, uh, uh, it is it is a leak. The leak definition is a visual visual leak. Now, a lot of times we'll measure the leak with a uh, method 21 device after we find it with OGI just to get the parts per million reading. But a, a lot of times we'll actually measure the leak rate with something like a high flow sampler to get an actual flow rate so that we can you know get that actual rate and then prioritize that repair or or you know when you get a really high leaker you can actually notify the operations so it should be repaired immediately and you don't really need you don't really need to do a secondary measurement to do that with the camera you can estimate the leak rate and say okay this is a small leak this is a big leak this is a massive leak and that's really where the camera gives you that ability to find those big leaks and, and prioritize the uh, repair of those leaks and really with an experienced camera camera operator you can uh you know, it, you can get, get really, really good and really proficient at doing those estimations using the camera. Uh, data management is, is again, really the weakest link uh, that we've seen in, in LDAR programs where uh, it's managing the communication of when those leaks are found, uh, communicating that data to the, the person on site that are gonna make the repairs, making sure they track the repairs and then communicating that data back and in, into some kind of data management system that tracks it all. Um, and, and then uh, tracks all that information and then use it for, for compliance reporting. Uh, and that's really where we see most programs fall apart is, is in the communication and the storing of that data. Um, so what we really recommend is a centralized database system that can manage all the data in one place. And everyone's, everyone's looking at the same data and looking at, the, at, at that same database as opposed to, we've, we've seen systems where it's, you know, literal uh, binders with written leak information or even multiple spreadsheets that are all over the place um, to track the data where you really having a centralized database is, is uh, what we found is really helps to manage all their programs. Um, and, you know, ensuring that the field data is collected accurately, um, ensuring that the compliance surveys have been done, that it all be done through the proper data management. Um, and one of the, the really key abilities is to have a communication between your leak detection database and a work order or repair work order system. So those, those two systems can talk to each other, uh, really reduce the manual communication from each system. Here's just some screenshots of uh, the Montreux system called Target Track, which is the, this is the Android application that our technicians use on site to collect uh, leak data, whether it's method 21 or OGI uh, leaks. And then that data is instantly uh, uh, synced up with Target Online, which is the interface that our clients would use to log in. Um, this is an example of the dashboard where they would log in, they would see what where the leaks are. Um, they could um, evaluate the uh, performance of their entire LR program over multiple areas or multiple facilities, where they can drill into each facility and see, um, you know, how many leaks are outstanding, how many are overdue, uh, how many leaks are on delay repair, what is the value of those leaks that are still outstanding, um, how much. Uh, uh, monetary value do we get of, of, of repairing those leaks and recovering that product and then uh, using this same system to to uh, report the data for compliance reporting whether it's internal reporting company reporting um, or or external to regulators whether it's state or federal for compliance reporting um, and one of the one again one of the, the really uh, important uh, communication um, or workflow uh, items that has really helped a lot of our clients is having a direct API communication between the database system and a work order system. So whether it's IBM Maximum or SAP or an environmental management system or any other work order system, um, we've developed a system so that our target online can, can automatically uh, uh, create, you know, send the leaks over to those systems and create work orders automatically. When those work orders are closed out by the client, it automatically shoots data back into our system. Um, and we found that this uh, you know, really takes that weak link of data management and communication and, and, and the manual process of communicating those leaks and, and eliminates a lot of those problems. Uh, safety, as I mentioned, uh, you know, we, we tend to see a lot of safety issues uh, uh, that were normally invisible uh, when we use OGI programs, especially at, uh, in facilities that haven't had OGI, OGI surveys before. And you really need to have a, a, a uh, protocol to follow for technicians for when they do find a leak, um, how to evaluate it to see if it is a potential safety issue, and then rate it as how how how, how big of a safety issue it is, um, and then and then have specific instructions on at what level should they should be contacting uh, their operators or, or or what their response should be at each level of, of those uh, uh, hazard assessments. 
Well, alternative work practice, uh, alternative work practice, best practices, um, performance tests. Uh, we uh, do obviously our technicians perform the performance test uh, before each survey. Um, but if conditions change during the day, you, you want to make sure that the technicians are redoing the test. So if, uh, if you have a significant change in the in the weather conditions, you want to redo that test to make sure that you're you're maintaining a proper maximum distance for the survey. Um, we use range finders when we're doing the survey so that if a technician um, you know is looking at something that he thinks may be close to the, the limit, he can use the range finder to make sure he's within his, his, his limit during the survey. Um, leak measurements, uh, again, we, we, we estimate every single leak that we find with OGI, uh, but preferably we'd like to, me to measure each leak as well with high flow sampler or, or another specific device beyond just the PPM reading so we can get actual leak measurement. Um, data recording, uh, we record uh, the full video of all the inspections, but record it in small portions, about 30 minute sections. Uh, we found that going beyond that, uh, if you try and save the video, it can, be, it, it can, it can freeze the camera and you can lose um, big portions and have to go back and do, redo the survey. So you want to break those up and then link each of those uh, videos to a specific area um, on, on the uh, facility so they can be tracked uh, for any auditing purposes. Um, repair confirmation, we'll also bubble test at every leak we find, whether it's OGI or Method 21, we'll bubble test it as well, using this, that soap surfactant solution to see if it, it'll bubble test. Most leaks will, will show bubble, but there's, they're the odd leak that, that may not. But we do that so that when an operator comes and does his repair, he can actually use the bubble test, which is a pretty simple test that anyone can do just to confirm if the repair has been done. Um, the annual method 21 that's required once per year, it can either be done at one specific time. So if you're doing all-term work practice, you have six full facility surveys a year. One of those is method 21. It has to be done at the same time every year. But you can also break that up into um, uh, breaking that, that method, annual method 21 up into different portions of the year. But the, each, each um, component has to be done at the same time each year. Okay, just to summarize. Um, uh, you know, we believe the benefits of, of alternative work practice are significant. Um, I think, as of now, I think we may be the only company actually providing alternative work practice or fully compliant alternative work practice in the U.S. Um, we expect that to change, especially if there's a uh, uh, revision to the refinery alternative work practice protocol. Um, we expect that to grow. Um, but we've been trying to we've been, we've been trying to promote this um, because uh, we know it's it's a better process to follow. But we also know that the benefits and the emission reduction is quite significant compared to standard uh, sets of the standard protocol. But really, uh, you know, if you take anything from this presentation, it's really changed the mindset uh, of leak detection. Um, and and some of the things to remember that the difference in rate from a small leak to a large leak is massive. You know, a large leak is not two or three times bigger than a small leak. It's you know thousands and thousands of times bigger. So knowing that there's that massive difference is an important mindset change. And really that goes from changing your mindset from leak count to looking at individual leak rates. And that's where you actually get the, the big impact on emission reduction. Uh, again, if you're, if, you know, if, you're, if you're saying that there's a, you know, your facility has a thousand leaks, that really means nothing. It's how big are those leaks? How, you know, what, is the, what is the biggest leaks? And when did you actually find those leaks and repair those leaks is what affects, the, is what affects your total emissions. Um, the method 21 PPM correlation equations, they do work for very small leaks, but that correlation goes off the rails uh, pretty quickly when you get to larger leaks. And that's why it's important to measure uh, each actual flow rate, or at the very least with a camera, give an estimation so you can prioritize that leak and make sure those bigger ones are repaired. Um, and emission reduction is determined not by how many leaks you find and repair, it's by when, when uh, sorry, how, how fast you find them and how big they are. Finding the bigger leaks and fixing them faster is what really makes the biggest impact on your facility. And that's really what, what uh, you know, what I hope people take from this presentation is to ch change the mindset from simply leak, leak counts and, and grading your facility and how many leaks it has to really looking at how big those leaks are, how big the, the biggest leaks are, and how long have they been sitting out there leaking a facility. Um, and by, by using technologies like OGI, we can really start to tackle this and actually see meaningful emission reductions uh, at these facilities. And that's about it. Uh, I think we're ready for a uh, question period now. Great. The first question is, have you had difficulty obtaining state approval for AWP? What recommendations can you provide in this regard? Uh, yeah, we've had uh, um, to go to various state agencies uh, for, for uh, applying for alternative work practice. 
Um, usually it's it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, if they if they if they reference the alternative practice in the regulation or they're aware of it, uh, it's pretty simple to to uh, get the approval. Um, a lot of times you have to show them, uh, you know, specifically how the term how the alternative practice is applied, and they may have other specific requirements that go beyond just the EPA alternative work practice that you need may need to follow that they, they want to see. But uh, generally speaking, when we uh, um, uh, you know when we approach the approach the state and and show them what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, uh, we haven't had we haven't had any denials of, of, of applications. Okay. Next question is: What is the length of your technician training program, and how long does it obtain? How long does it take to obtain a certificate? Yeah, uh, it depends on prior experience of the technician if they used the camera before. But basically, every new technician goes through the full training program. There's different modules. Uh, based on the equipment type and the reg regulation type they're allowed to, to use. So we have trained not just for the camera, but for standard MET 21, for the camera, for the high flow sampler, all the different components. Generally speaking, the, the training program uh, for a new hire lasts about six months before they're fully fully certified to do their own surveys. Um, and then even beyond that, they're audited, all technicians are audited uh, quarterly um, on, on, uh, on on, on not just OGI, but all their their their, their leak detection performance. So um, yeah, about six months, I would say, is the average. Okay, thank you. And how small of a leak can OGI see on average? Uh, it depends on on the conditions that you're looking at. In laboratory conditions, you can get down into the you know below a thousand ppm, and we've even seen that in the field where uh, if you have really good conditions, you can see. You know, under a thousand ppm, even that we've even got down to 500 ppm. But on average, I would see in normal real world conditions, you're looking at about 2,500 ppm as a, as a rough uh, lower limit. Uh, again, it depends on the conditions uh, of, of where you're where you're looking at uh, for each leak. And again, but that, again, those you know, when you look at the the, the rate of anything below really 10,000 ppm, um, the actual leak rate is 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 quite small. Um, what we want to do is focus on those larger leaks and finding the larger leaks faster. Okay. All right. And the next, next question has a couple of questions within the question. Um, so how prevalent is the use of AWP and do you think this will lead to more use of AWP? Uh, it's There's really low usage of alternative work practice. Um, in, in natural gas processing, um, in refineries and petrochemical, um, it's really, uh, you know, I think some of these have been around for, you know, 14 years now. And I thought, you know, after a few years, everyone is going to be using the camera for most other programs, but it's really a slow adoption. I think one of the, one of the problems with the adoption of a term of work practice was the inclusion of that annual method 21 requirement. Um, as I mentioned, that annual method 21 is about half the cost of a term of work practice program. So it, it's, it most, I think most contractors looked at it and said, it's going to be with that annual month spending one, it's going to be too expensive uh, to do. But we've actually, we started doing alternative work practice surveys in the natural gas industry in about 2015. And we found that we were able to do it for uh, at least equal cost to standard Met 21 and usually about 15% lower cost because we had uh, built efficiencies around alternative work practice OGI and, and the data management. Um, but I think that that's been one of the big barriers is that method 21 requirement. If that's removed, from the uh, alternative work practice for refineries, and hopefully that continues on to other industries as well for petrochemical and, and natural gas processing. Um, I think we would see a massive adoption of alternative work practice across all industries, um, and and really, we, and 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 I think that I think you know I hope that happens. I know that from my experience with alternative gas imaging, that alternative work practice, we've we've significantly reduced emissions at facilities. Um, and if that is, is applied, you know, not just with our company, but all companies and, and as an industry standard, I think we're going to see a massive emission reduction in those industries across North America. Okay. Next question. Any experience with Rebellion Photonics? And they had developed optical methods that quantified leaks. Yeah, I haven't uh, personally used that system. I'm aware of it. I've seen it over the past few years in conferences, um, but I, I don't, don't have any experience specifically with that uh, that technology. Okay. And one more question: How many techni technicians are required full time for M21 components? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the last part of that? 
how many technicians are required full time for M21 components? There's a number attached to it, and it's a oh, very large that, number. Method 21 components. Um, well, uh, yeah. it depends on how many components you have in facility. Um, uh, you know, an average technician, like we said, it, it can do about 500 components a day. So let's say you have, uh, you know, a small facility, 10,000 components. That's going to take 20 days to do. Um, if you have a large facility, most facility, most large refineries, obviously, they have, you know, dozens of technicians working the full year doing those surveys. Um, whereas with with uh, alternative work practice, you can basically uh, cut that by 20 times, essentially, um, when you're when you're comparing a full survey with Method 21 versus a full survey with OGI. Um, but yeah, it's uh, based, it, it, you know, the number of technicians you have on site is based on the number of components you have and the frequency that you're doing those components with Method 21. All right, great. Thank you so much, Terrence, and thanks again, Montrose Environmental, for a great presentation. Please visit them at montrose-env.com. The on-demand version of this event will be available in about two hours at bigwebinars.com. Feel free to watch it again and share with your colleagues. On behalf of Big Magazine, we thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.